Stafford, you should be very scared. Scared of the Russians, scared of the Chinese, scared of the North Koreans. The list goes on and on. But should we really be scared? We're going to look at that in this video. And should we be even more scared about what's going on domestically right now in the United States of America? We have a banking crisis emerging. We're going to tackle that as well. That's super important. And the most important subject in the room, gold and silver, will wrap up with that and how that possibly could shield us from the trouble that's headed our way. I'm glad you're with me here in the basement. Let's get started right now. You need to be scared. East versus the West. The bricks are emerging, the giant brick wall, and everybody's joining them. They're coming to get us. They're going to start their own currency. They are holding all the world's natural resources. Should we be scared? Maybe we should when we consider this. Those countries, specifically China and Russia, have for a long time been involved in long-term planning. I think I just saw the other day that President Xi in China is one of the like longest running leaders. I mean, and look what they've accomplished over there. We know that Vladimir Putin, he's been in power for a long time as well. These guys play chess, while a lot of times in the West, people say that we're playing checkers. Look at what's gone on just in the last 10 years. The World Economic Forum, right, says we need to get off fossil fuels. Well, how that, how, you know, how's that working out for us? We got an energy crisis, number one, and we have inflation like we haven't seen for decades. We'd like to thank our sponsor, First Mining Gold. They're a Canadian gold developer with two world-class projects in Canada. They also have a handful of other projects. When you total up all the gold in their resources, it comes to over 12 million ounces. They're worth checking out. I'll put a link to the company's website in the description below. What do you see when you look at the big picture? I hear a lot of people saying that the West is run by doofus globalists. I mean, heck, now they're trying to push this idea of 15-minute cities. And we know for a fact, if we just objectively look at the last 20, 30 years of history, they're putting the West into war after war after war. And what do you see when you think about these world economies in the East, China and Russia, because of long-term planning, right? Their economies remain relatively strong. India, their economy growing and growing. When in the West, when in the United States, does it feel like we're like walking on a tightrope of like super high leverage and kind of a lot of make-believe factors in our economy and that things could crumble at any time? And let's just at this point now move into this banking crisis. Are you following this at all? Silicon Valley Bank, the 18th largest bank in the United States of America, right? Went kaput last week. The 18th largest bank. Is this a sign that the high interest rate policy that the Fed had to embark on, right, to save the dollar, to protect the dollar, to supposedly fight inflation, is this the first crack in the system? Is this the first domino as a result of these high rates? Because simply, folks, when the rates went high, all the bonds that were held by the banks, right, as collateral, they have all crashed in value. And you know what? These banks, they haven't even disclosed that yet. Those are called unrealized losses. So likely, likely, it's not just Silicon Valley Bank that's in trouble. Any big bank, if a lot of the depositors showed up to get their money out, would have a hard time making everyone whole. But let's go back to being scared about these Eastern countries taking us over. Have you also noticed that they're all working together? China's working with Russia. Russia's working with Iran. Uh, China's working with India. Saudi Arabia's working with all of them. They're all starting to work together. Let me read this list to you of countries that just in the last 10 years 
have developed strong trade relationships with China alone. Vietnam, Mexico, Brazil, Thailand, Turkey, and Indonesia, and that's just a few. So these countries are growing and they're working, they're cooperating, and really most of them, of course, with the exception of Russia, aren't out blowing all their money on wars, they're blowing their money on growing their economies. And I think maybe it should make us just a little scared. How many years have you been around? If you look back on your life, doesn't it feel like you've been told one thing after another about who to be afraid of, right? When I was a little boy, it was the Soviet Union we had to be afraid of. And then it was actually Japan for a while. In the 80s, they were going to take over the world. They were buying everything. There was a lot of bias against Japan. Then it became, what, Al-Qaeda in the Middle East. I mean, the list just goes on and on. And what is it now when we're not being told to be afraid of North Korea or Iran or Russia or China, right? What do we hear about China? Message after message of fear, fear, fear that they're going to take over. I mean, if the Chinese are that bad and horrible, then why don't we go after the people here in the United States that gave everything away to them in the late 90s and in the early 2000s? I remember, right? Do you remember back then? You know, I was like 25, 30 years old, and I remember thinking, wow, like we're moving everything to China. I wonder why we're doing that. I'm sure somebody here in the United States stood to benefit from that. Why aren't we talking about who moved everything over there, but I digress. I can tell you this. I thought this was very interesting. I want to read you a little quote that I read. This is in regards to Chinese-U.S. Uh, relationships. Everything the other side is doing is seen as negative and done as with evil intentions. U.S. and China, quote-unquote, plunge further into a spiral of hostility. So... What are we going to do, right? Everyday people like us. We want to protect ourselves. We want to protect our families, right? You want to still be able to afford your internet so you can come down here and join me in Ron's basement, which I do appreciate you doing. And don't forget to subscribe. That's always free. But the other thing we can do is, and what we choose to do, is hold some precious metals, right? Because, well, we know the other side, they love precious metals. We know the Chinese and the Russians and all the countries in the East that, well, we know their central banks bought a world record amount of gold last year, for instance. We know the Indians imported 300 million ounces of silver, over a third of the world's silver production. We know also that there's a 5,000-year history of precious metals holding their value. So when we want to protect ourselves, our families, the little bit of wealth we may have, right, we choose to do it with precious metals. I like silver, but you may like gold. Whatever floats your boat, you don't have to agree with me. I also own a lot of gold mining stocks. Hey, it'll be interesting to see how this all plays out. Should we be scared? It's interesting right now what's going on in the world, geopolitically, but even internally within the United States. Guys, we have been walking on a tightrope with all this leverage in this banking situation. It could get real interesting in the coming months. Who knows what they're up to, if they even know what they're up to. You take care of yourself. I'll see you next time.